Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to kindly invite the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, Her Excellency Ratno Marsudi. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jakarta, welcome to the Regional Conference on Digital Diplomacy. Today's theme is very timely as we strive to find better understanding and link between digital and diplomacy. This is today's tool, our gadget. This gadget, together with the Internet of Things, can unite or divide. These digital device devices may define the fast from the slow. As President Joko Widodo once said, it is a country with speed that will defeat the slow one, making the latter irrelevant. Our inability to keep up with technological leaps in these small things in our hand is what will make us obsolete. This also applies to diplomacy. Failure to adapt the rapid transformation taking place at rapid speed in the digital world will leave diplomacy irrelevant, or even worse, the internet may become a source of conflict. Of course, it is in the contrary of the very goal of diplomacy. This is why it is time for the word diplomacy to go hand in hand with the word digital. Ladies and gentlemen, diplomacy as a tool of foreign policy is being transformed by development of ICT. Availability of information is longer our issue today. Take Twitter and Instagram, for instance. You will know exactly what happened in the Middle East only by following somebody's tweets or posts. This might serve as a double-edged sword for us. It presents plenty of opportunities on one hand, but also plenty of challenges on the other. How can we leverage such opportunity? And what can we do to address the challenges? Allow me to present four ideas in trying to address those questions. First, to use digital diplomacy to spread the message of peace. New internet technology and media tools should be utilized in countering the growing threat of violent extremism and hard threat on the net. This is the area that the international community should further explore. And this is where diplomacy is needed. To ensure that social media and online platform can contribute to the fight against violent extremism and terrorism. We need to engage technology giants such as Facebook, Google, Instagram, and Twitter to spread a peaceful message and tolerance. The idea is simple, to get the technology industry on board in providing a platform for world leaders, religious leaders, and community leaders to spread messages of tolerance and peace online. Second, to use digital diplomacy as tool for economic cooperation. No country is immune to global economic megatrends such as rising inequality, the impact of the fourth industrial revolution, not to mention the recent trade tension. Consequently, diplomacy and cooperation has been the only way to face those challenges. We must be able to ensure that digital technology is used to transform our economy and to empower our people. Digital diplomacy should be able to bridge economic collaboration and support more openness in our economy. With projection of 6.5 trillion US dollar global retail e-commerce sales in 2022, the digital sector will surely be the powerhouse of tomorrow's economy. Third, 
digital diplomacy as tool to protect our citizen. I believe that if used effectively, internet could become a powerful tool in protecting our citizen and interests abroad. On Indonesian part in the foreign ministry, we now have the portal Peduli WNI. This is an integrated and digitalized data system for the Indonesian diaspora and safe travel, a mobile application for Indonesian citizens traveling abroad, complete with consular information, even emergency services. Both internet infrastructure were created to provide access to information, engage real time, and improve our services to Indonesian citizens, both at home as well as abroad. Fourth, digital diplomacy as tool for development. Cultural gaps between the information rich and the information poor, if not well handled, will cause social program, social problems, social division in our society. Our job now is to reduce or, if possible, to eliminate digital divide, which separates the haves and the haves not, to ensure that no one is left behind. We must to reinvent our digital diplomacy to raise awareness and provide better internet penetration. Today, more than four million people across the globe are connected to internet for an average of six hours per day. Around 1.8 billion individual internet users use social media with a penetration rate of 47%. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, we have more than 150 million active social media users, mostly the young generation, the millennials, with their own distinctive lifestyle. This number represents a myriad positive potential, one that will continue to grow. It is my hope that our youth continue to use the social media to enhance their social and environmental awareness. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are still far from the limits of digital diplomacy. Therefore, I'm very pleased that today we will learn from one another to harness the full potential of digital diplomacy to enrich our understanding of digital diplomacy to develop mutually beneficial programs in bridging the digital gap in our region and to build a more coordinated and synchronized response to the challenges of this new millennium. I hope that today's discussion will be lively and productive. And with this, I'm pleased and honored to officially open the regional conference on digital Welcome to the regional conference on digital diplomacy.